Hello everyone and welcome to the Mustache Cube channel. Today I am here with my updated version of the Lightsaber 101 guide because the last patch brought some changes. I am going on full detail with the basics and with the advanced lightsaber combat tips. Before anything else guys be sure to drop a like and to subscribe to the channel if you are new here because it helps me grow my moustache. Also, before I move on to the video, I just want to thank and to shout out the players and subscribers that joined me and helped me to get the footage I needed for this guide by joining me playing online or even by joining a private hero showdown to lightsaber duel me. Shout out and thanks to my man Brian Fowler aka Ixis. Shout out and thanks to my man Douglas Dubois aka Anakin Youngling Slayer. Shout out and thanks to my man Elijah aka Gabe Elijah 2015 and shout out and thanks to my man Antonio Matos aka Tony 2003 PT. I really appreciate your help guys thank you very much for your support on the channel and to get this footage and on my way to become a big youtuber. Now let's get into the video. Mustache. Mustache. Let's start with the basics. As all the heroes, the lightsaber heroes have two different HP bars. The white one which is your real HP at the present and the grey HP bar which is the maximum HP your hero can regenerate when not taking any damage. As you might know, all lightsaber users are force sensitive and so they can jump pretty high if you hold the jump button down. The jump has two different phases. The ascending phase and the descending phase. If you do a lightsaber attack during the ascending phase, your character will jump a little further at the expense of stamina. This move can not only be used to travel further away, but also to hit opponents in the air. If you double click the lightsaber attack button during the descending phase right before you hit the ground, your first and second lightsaber attack will be faster than if you were grounded. To better use this move, you can do a small jump by quickly tapping the jump button and follow it by two lightsaber clicks. It's good to surprise an enemy while closing in or dealing some damage. Be careful though, because lightsaber attacking on the air costs more stamina than lightsaber attacking on the ground. Just the action of holding up your block used to cost stamina, but now it doesn't anymore. So, now you can freely hold your block to prevent being hit in the first place. Now, you only deplete stamina when actively blocking or deflecting blaster shots, blocking lightsaber or melee attacks, or when attacking with your lightsaber. Blocking with your lightsaber blocks enemy hero abilities, blaster shots, and lightsaber or melee attacks from the front. It doesn't block explosions, nor exploding shots, nor stuns. And from behind you still get damaged. When you attack with your lightsaber, you do a close in on your enemy, shortening the distance between you and the target while dealing damage if you hit your target. Before this patch, running out of stamina meant that you could not block nor do a closing in attack, but you could still attack even though you dealt less damage, and you didn't close in on your target. As of the last patch, you can no longer block and you can no longer lightsaber attack at all if you run out of stamina. On the old combat system, blocking a lightsaber attack would stagger your opponent and you would have a window to counter attack, but not anymore. Now, if you block a lightsaber attack and that attack fully depletes your stamina, you will take full damage and be staggered. You can use this if you know that your target has much less stamina than you to break his block and leave him vulnerable taking that chance to hit 2 to 4 lightsaber attacks. This works great if you are using Ray, Vader or Dooku since you have abilities that make your lightsaber attacks cost less stamina. This is another change with this patch. Even though Dooku's ability dualist still gives him unlimited stamina, Ray's insight and Vader's rage only give them a 50% less stamina cost now. Even if it is a 50% less stamina cost reduction it's still pretty good because it doubles the number of attacks you can do, so any star cards that I recommended on their guides should maintain the same. The lightsaber combat now breaks down into different values. The number of lightsaber attacks a character can do, the number of blaster shots you can block or deflect, 
the number of lightsaber attacks or melee attacks you can block or deflect, and the number of seconds it takes before stamina starts regenerating. These values, as well as the lightsaber attack damage values, were all updated in the lightsaber community transmission and so I will leave a link in the description so that you can check it out yourselves if you have any doubts. If a player can do 10 lightsaber attacks and deflect 46 blaster shots for example, it means that if during a fight you deflect 23 blaster shots, you will only be able to lightsaber attack 5 times. You can now understand that not letting your stamina run out and not blocking melee nor lightsaber attacks when you are really low on stamina is now more important than ever before. So you need to alternate attacking and blocking with dodging and jumping. You can dodge twice and jump, or dodge then jump then dodge again, or any possible combination to try and avoid being hit while regaining stamina. Last but not least, let's talk about stun lock. When you are hit by a melee or a lightsaber attack, you get stun locked, which means the attack prevents you from running away and locks you in place. With the last patch, stun lock was slightly nerfed. If you get stun locked now, you can't be stun locked again for 0.8 seconds. It's not much of a difference, but this gives you a better window to get out of it. To get out of stun lock, you need to dodge before you are attacked or right after being attacked before you get attacked again. The best ways to get out of stun lock and to regain stamina at the same time is to dodge twice and then jump, dodge then jump and then dodge again, or any combination of these that you can imagine. Dodging and jumping is not only used to get out of stun locks and regain stamina, but also to regain HP before you actively re-enter the battle. The more HP you have and the more you prevent from being depleted, the more likely it is for you to survive and to win your battle. So, sometimes it's better to run for 5 or 6 seconds than to rush in and die. But sometimes it's also better to rush in to get that health back when you kill an enemy. You have to decide yourself and to gamble when it's best to run or when it's best to risk and get health back. Now let's move into the combat itself. When playing against troopers or against reinforcements or against blaster heroes, against lightsaber heroes or even hunting for killstreaks in GA or CS, or even when doing all at the same time, spamming lightsaber attacks is rarely the best option. When is it a good option? It's only a good option if you are on a 1v1 against a lightsaber hero with no one else around and his stamina is almost depleted and yours is full. Or if you are using a stamina cost changing ability like Raising Sight, Vader's Rage or the Cruise Duelist. That's the only case it's good to spam a little. And even then you can be countered. Why? Because if you spam you are locked on your lightsaber attack animation and you can be targeted by blaster users far away or you can be targeted by other heroes and their abilities or even if your target dodges you. So the best way to prevent this is not only to alternate attacks with blocks, but also to alternate attacks with dodges. You should never lightsaber attack more than twice without using a dodge. So you should get used to attack once or twice, and even if your enemy is dead, you should dodge to prevent any third party from hitting you from afar or even from a closer third party. So depending on your situation, you should get used to attack dodge attack or attack attack dodge attack or attack dodge attack dodge attack or attack attack dodge attack attack and so on and so on. The more you practice and get used to this the more advantage you will see and the better you can pull it off. Another important thing is to account for those blaster users be it battle point free classes reinforcements or heroes that are really good at dodging lightsaber attacks. If they dodge 5 or 6 of your attacks and nail some shots and deplete your stamina you are done. So, to fight these players, you close in while blocking the incoming fire, or by jumping or by using abilities like Moss Saber Spin. And you never use Lightsaber Attack twice in a row before they deplete their dodges. You close in, and whether Lightsaber Attack wants to make them dodge, or if they dodge just because you are close, you want to use your dodge in the same direction as your target right after they use their dodge. You do this to close in, and then you can attack once or twice. But better than attacking after you use your dodge in their direction, just by showing them that they gain no distance on you, some will dodge immediately, and you will do the same and dodge in the same direction again. Now, 
Your target dodges are depleted for a second and you can light saber attack twice or even use one of your abilities and combine it with other abilities or light saber attacks. This is the best way to fight against blaster hero users or any other blaster user. Keep in mind that the new ARC troopers and the BX commando droid have a star card to give them 3 dodges, so these might be harder to pull it off. So another thing you can do, other than just dodge on the same direction, is for you to aim your lightsaber attacks or your abilities to the moment your target's dodge or roll is finishing. This way, the moment he finishes a roll or a dodge, they will be hit by your attacks or abilities. Let's move on to lightsaber user versus lightsaber user. Now, your opponents cannot be staggered when you block, so your window to attack and counter attack changed. Now you need to outplay your enemy on a different way. You want to time your abilities and your attacks on several different small windows to attack. The first window to attack and use your abilities is when your opponent starts running away from you since he cannot block while running. This can happen because he needs to regain HP, because he needs to regain stamina or because he started to panic due to being really low on one of them or both of them. The second window is to attack or use your abilities when your opponent is still chasing you or closing in on you but he still haven't changed to a close quarters fighting stance by activating his block. This can happen because he chose you as his next opponent or because you tricked him into chasing you. I like to wait until I have all my abilities ready or one really good ability ready and pretend I am starting to panic. I start running away and trick him or them into following me only to quickly turn around and open him up or them up with one ability and try to get the better of him or them. The third window is very similar to the first two windows. You want to time your abilities when your opponent is jumping in the air where he cannot block. This can happen because they are trying to run from you or because they are trying to close in on you. You use this opportunity to open up your target to try to get the better of him. You can use it to use an ability and run away if you are on a tight spot. Or you can use it to finish your opponent off if he is really low on HP. And that might be the reason for him to be jumping trying to get away. The fourth window is when you catch an opponent off guard. Whether he is not paying attention to you or whether he is just focusing on another target, you can try and catch him from behind and get the better of him. Never forget that attacking from behind deals bonus damage, so use it to your advantage. The fifth attack window is when your opponent attacks you or uses an ability against you and you dodge and he is still locked in the animation of the ability or lightsaber attack. Use that moment to use your abilities or lightsaber attack him while he is still locked at the animations. When lightsaber dueling face to face and your opponent is already or is still blocking, you need to try and create the attack window opportunity yourself. You need to close in, dodge on his back direction and attack once you get a good view at his back. This seems simple but it's tricky. You have to dodge and attack while aiming on his back. So you need to dodge and turn around at the same time that you are attacking. When you get your first attack, then it's time to outplay him. You dodge again and attack again, then you dodge again and attack again, outplaying your foe and getting a few attacks in. Sometimes you will be able to attack him twice before dodging again and sometimes only once. Sometimes you will be able to kill your opponent just by outplaying him this way, but some other times you need to outplay him in several different ways. You need to be the judge of that. When he starts losing HP and or stamina he will start to dodge and jump and run away and now you have more windows of opportunity to attack and finish him up. Use all the tips and all the windows of attack combined for the ultimate outplay over foe. Never ever forget to keep track of your stamina and your HP and try to regain them or maintain them by alternating the blocks and attacks with dodges and jumps. You can and should also keep track of your opponent's abilities. You will only start doing this with experience and after playing all the different heroes and classes. You can know if your opponent has his abilities back with several different lines of thought. 
First, you can just know the seconds that a certain ability takes to recharge and secondly, you can time your opponent's abilities by timing your own. For example, if both you and your opponent use your ability with the biggest cooldown at the same time, you will be getting that ability back at more or less the same time. For those of you who watched the video until the end, I will give you all a bonus tip. How to deal with stuns. This doesn't always work because you need to predict the moment your opponent will activate his stun. But if you do successfully predict his stun, you can easily deal with it. You predict when your opponent is going to use the stun, and before you get hit by it, you jump. Most of the stun time will be spent on the air, and when you fall, even if you are still affected by the stun, it's just for a brief moment. With this, you can prevent being killed in one stun. It's hard to nail, but the more you try it, the more chances of success you will have. Guys, I really hope you liked this video and I really hope it helps you all out. If you have any additional doubts, just leave them on the comment section down below and I will answer them as soon as possible and to the best of my knowledge. Follow me on Twitter and follow me on Twitch. Join me on Facebook and join me on Discord. The links will be in the description. Don't forget to drop your likes, share, comment and subscribe. Tuga signing out and may the moustache be with you. Mustache.